Hello everyone, my name is Relax and Panic and this is another reaction to Shokugeki no Suma. It is season 3, episode 15. And you know what to do as always. If you want to see the reaction itself, just go down into my descriptions, follow the links, replace the circumflex.parts with real dots and enjoy. Once you've done, feel free to come back here and hear my thoughts about this episode. So, see you soon. For those that came back, welcome back. Now let's talk. That was a great one, a good episode. Um, I mean, it, it consisted of more than either two and a half parts, you could say. Um, first part, clearly the um, second dish they had to serve the plate, um, the noodles, so the ramen. Um, and it was, in, in my opinion, in many ways, a repetition of the last episode. Um, because the uh, concept of the trap that was set, of the problems they encountered, they're very similar to the ones in episode 14. So, um, while in 14 everyone had all ingredients and they were given a bad ingredient, this time everyone had ingredients and the time to get what they needed. Additionally, while the rebels had no ingredients at all and no option to get additional ingredients because of this uh, snowstorm. So, it is just kind of a similar idea here. And um, the, they once again got through it by wits, by being clever, by having knowledge about um, the product, about the food, and uh, thus found the way of using potatoes instead. So this information they got from um, uh, from Irina, I see, from Irina Nakiri, but um, I really would kind of question if not at least some of the rebels would have done it by themselves. So these informations that in the last episode and in this episode especially is shown as being from Irina, we had in the past similar things where Yukihira came up with it because he knew stuff like that. So um, I think they're just trying to push a little bit that Irina is becoming more and more of a leader, um, is like a center stone of why they pass and uh, they bring her out into the light and as a very important person for the rebels more and more. I can see that, I understand the concept, but as I said, I think, as example, uh, the Aldini brothers and uh, Yukihira, in my opinion, would have made it through this by themselves as well. They would have had some idea like that. We had it in Shukugeki's in the past, where there were moments when um, Yukihira was doing something, and one of the judges or the competitor was looking and was like, what is he doing? And then it's like, oh no, he used potatoes because how could I not see that? You know, stuff like that. So it's okay. I like it. Um, winning by having wits, by being clever. That's cool for me. Um, we have all the Elite 10 moving. Uh, the present ones and the past ones, those were, who were expelled. Um... So I guess the present ones will all face the rebels. Um, I guessed that already in the beginning, but I kind of had to ask, how would that be an even competition? Because the idea is that everyone, every student has to make kind of the same tests, where they are alternating a little bit here by changing the setup, making it harder for the rebels. But when you say every of the rebels will have to face one-on-one -on -one, as it seems, an elite 10, wouldn't that mean that um, the other students who are not rebels will have to do the same? Or who will they have to face? I mean, it's a bit the question here. Um, which brings in the question about um, respect and about uh, if the judges judge fair, about fairness. So if you say everyone has to face an elite 10, that would mean the students who are not rebels have to do that as well. And by seeing that they only can recook stuff they were learned to do, sure, that's possibly like a good dish. I'm not sure if they still could manage it. I mean, even to recreate a fantastic dish, you need a lot and a lot of knowledge. I mean, that's a high class academy here, so possibly they have it. Um, still, what I was waiting for kind of is this moment where one of the judges in the past, in the past two episodes, or one of the lead 10, is saying like, this is the best thing I've ever eaten, but you failed because I don't want you to pass. 
Um, right now we could always say that the food was so overwhelming they had to let them pass. But they were crying about it, you know, so... Hmm. While before tasting it, they were always very, very negative and they were like, I will let them fail, whatever. Um, so, it's a bit weird. How, how do you find so many negative people, you know, who are then, however, overwhelmed? I'm not sure. Um, the, the concept is a bit problematic, in my opinion. So, that's one thing. Um, we are in Sapporo. We were in Sapporo now. Um, nice city, as it seems, with a lot of food. And... Um, that was the second half of this episode, the rebels enjoying the city, um, enjoying visiting the city. As we know now, they were allowed to do it, so they can be split into groups and then um, moved into different er directions with the trains, which is a clever way of splitting them, trying to weaken their resolve, trying to weaken how strong they are as a group. Because as we've seen in the end of, um, of the dish, um, in this mansion, they are a group and they work together and they possibly get a lot of strength of their num by their numbers and by having everyone in their back helping them if needed. So splitting them up is a legit, a very legit um, way of doing it. Clever. Um, and now we have those four here. So we have one of the Aldini brothers. We have Yukihira. Uh, we. Have I always have to search for her name? I'm sorry. Where is she? She's one of my favorites, but I the heck can never remember her name. There she is, Megumi. Um, and we have Irina. Interestingly enough, um, in one group, so four people, and their enemy, or the one, at least for one of them, will be Rindo, I guess. But the newest em enemy is someone else. So, that was interesting. Um, Hayama. Akira Hayama. He is one of my favorites from the past uh, cookings as well. So, he is the one who loves dishes. Who lo um, uh, spice. He is the god of spice. Um, in, I remember that I went in one of my um, comments later on. I partially compared him. And I have... Yeah, with um, Ryu. Because Ryu had very spicy food as well. But Ryu is very much focused on extremely strong spice in the meaning of um, burning away your taste buds. And had, I think to remember, um, some kind of seafood he set up there. While um, Akira Hayama is this incredibly clever and um, talented cook who was living together with this old woman, I think. Um, so it's interesting to see that he joined into Central, and I'm not sure why he should, because he seemed very much like a very sincere character. Um, but tell me if I'm wrong, but I think to remember that he beat Yukihira once. I'm not sure about it, however, but I think he did. Or at least he was uh, someone who was possible to do it. I think he beat Yukihira somewhere in the past in, uh, in Shokugeki. And that would be an explanation why they set him up against Yukihira, for sure. Um, he was... Mm, he has no match yet when it comes to the usage of spice in whatever way. So I guess this battle will be about that. And um, that's a clever way of stopping someone. If you are like... You know, they are still students. If you say, like, you have to win in a battle, in a Shukugeki, against... And you put in, like, the number one... Five star Michelin cook in the world against you. That's just no fair match. Even if you do something really extraordinary, it is very hard to win against someone like that. So putting up um, Hayama against Yukihira might be a really roadblock there. And I look forward to it because, as we all know, Yukihira is overcoming those and grows every time he encounters one of those roadblocks. Uh, which brings me to how they <laughs> did not sleep. So that's very fitting. While uh, Megumi is not sleeping because she's afraid of the next day and she's afraid of having a roadblock in front of her, um, Aldini and Yukihira are not sleeping because they are waiting for it and they are like, oh, tomorrow it will be. They're just happy about it. They are just so weird in this way. But I like the fact that they bring those two more and more together now. So... Um, 
I mean, the the Aldini brother always stated the fact that he sees Yukihira as his nemesis in the meaning of not negative, but the one to always compete against, to always be so, uh, there there that there's always like a race between those two who is better, and as long as they keep this going, they will grow on each other, they will grow in their um in their craft, they will get better b with what they do. But now we can see that additionally there's a friendship forming more and more. So they are moving out together um, to restaurants to check on food. I like it, as I said, really good. Um, they put in more of this as example about the relationship between characters um, when it comes to Irina, where we have um, Mito confessing to her that she always looked up to her even as a kid. And um, Irina wasn't aware of that. So even there we have this setting up of new bonds between characters. Stronger bonds. And I like that. And Irina is growing more and more. She said she never knew this city was so beautiful. And I already commented, I don't think it's a city. At least not only. It's the fact that you, for the first or one of the first times, realize friendships, realize camaraderie, spending free time with friends having a good day just having a good day not having to eat all the time okay now she has to eat <laughs> but you know what i mean so this is something that she experiences for the first time um nicely done i like it, it was a good episode definitely was and i look forward to the next ones and where we are all heading to that's it for me this time my name is relax and panic as always feel free to comment like and subscribe goodbye and out